Chinese stocks may just be too cheap. Although the bearish tide against Chinese equities has been growing rapidly over the past 24 months, there are some money managers and institutional investors that say stocks in Hong Kong are actually value for money. Obviously, geopolitical risks and an underwhelming economic recovery have turned Chinese equity gauges into global underperformers, with something like the MSCI China and the Hang Seng China Enterprises Indices both falling into bear markets very recently. And although pessimism in the West against anything related to China remains dominant, some investors and money managers, including myself, are sensing that a bottom is indeed forming in some of the most hated stocks in China, whether it be Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com, or even EV players like NIO or Xpeng Motors. And there's two main reasons why I think that is the case. First of all, the Chinese economy is recovering slower than what we are experiencing here in the West, which means the government is inching to potentially release some stimulus to help reach its GDP growth targets for 2023. And secondly, unlike a lot of the stretched valuations in tech stocks here in the West, Chinese tech stocks like Alibaba are trading at historically low PE ratios. And no, that is not an exaggeration. If you look at the PE for Alibaba, it is currently sitting at 23 with a forward PE that is unbelievably cheap at almost under $10 a share. This comes in the context of something like Amazon, which is the closest competitor to Alibaba here in the West, trading at a current PE of 304 with a forward PE at 48. And this comes in the context of Amazon actually growing slower year over year than Alibaba, where Alibaba grew around 368% versus Amazon's earnings growth of 186. And although in the short term, the market doesn't really seem to care about this valuation, it's been very well known that stocks in the short term are simply a voting machine and not a weighing machine. Although in the West, in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, we witnessed a much stronger recovery, China always takes a very long time because most households in the country are simply not invested in stocks as much as here we are in the United States. And the fact of the matter is that despite the significant drawdown we've seen so far in 2023, the technical aspect of a bottom has not been breached on the Hang Seng Index. We are still significantly off the lows of 14,000 we saw in October of 2022, and simply this pullback could just be a correction which is trying to fizzle out the weak hands and rake in more institutional money. Because at the end of the day, compared to the S&P 500, the volatility of the Hang Seng is much higher giving it a higher beta and making all the moves to the upside and the downside bigger and worse. And although it's impossible to predict when exactly the next bull market would start, we are already starting to see some leading indicators of what might be happening in the Hong Kong markets rather soon. As you can see, Chinese stocks in the US are actually starting to outperform those in mainland China and in Hong Kong since the start of May. This is something we haven't seen happen in more than three years and historically has always signaled a new inflection point in the sentiment around Chinese companies. And I would bet your bottom dollar that a lot of this is being driven by anticipation of new stimulus in the economy that could spur growth and help some of the biggest and youngest startups play better. And what could make this new bull market and rally in Chinese stocks even better is the fact that most Wall Street banks have cut a significant portion of their MSCI targets amid the slump that we've seen since the start of the year. Although Chinese stocks bottomed in October of 2022, they saw a significant decline that basically gave back all the gains of 2023. That scared out a lot of retail investors and, as it turns out, a lot of hedge funds and institutional investors as well. And as we all know, when the trade starts shifting to the upside, it's going to be these banks that start the next FOMO trade 
and chase these prices up. Because believe it or not, that is exactly what has played out so far in the bull market in America. Many hedge funds positioned themselves out of equities at the end of last year, and they sold into this rally. And now the market is up almost 20%, with the Nasdaq up 30% almost for 2023. And as any experienced investor would tell you, low expectations are actually a good thing, because it means that stocks could see a meaningful re-rating on any positive catalyst. And right now in the Hang Seng Index, there is so much bad news priced in that any positive GDP number, inflation data, or unemployment metric from mainland China could spark re-interest in this area, especially because Western stocks in many eyes are becoming slightly overvalued. And the really interesting thing is we're already starting to see a lot of action being taken to help revive those data points in China. Not only did the central bank lower its federal borrowing rate, which is essentially the interest rate equivalent of the US, but Secretary Antony Blinken from the US is officially planning to visit Beijing for the first time since the pandemic. Blinken is slated to hold meetings with senior Chinese officials on Sunday and on Monday, and he will be the first U.S. cabinet-level official to visit China since 2019 and the highest-ranking U.S. government since Joe Biden in 2021. And as it turns out, the slowing Chinese economy and falling confidence in his government is one of the big reasons why Beijing and Xi Jinping is even allowing Anthony Blinken to enter the country. According to many experts, this trip could show Europe and China's various allies that Beijing is willing to cooperate in stopping their downward spiral in the economy, which obviously affects most global economies, with China being one of the centers of global supply chains. And that's why I think that this visit could help Europe be more reluctant in going all in on this China tech war that we've been talking about in the West for so many years. And that could certainly help easing a lot of the fears around Chinese equities and businesses, which we as all know are pretty important to the global economy. Whether this geopolitical trip or easier fiscal policy from the Chinese central bank is going to foreshadow better performance for Chinese stocks, only time will tell. As for right now, valuations seem quite cheap compared to the West, and that is exactly why I personally am looking to take advantage of the sector, particularly by Alibaba and some internet ETFs that broad invest in different companies. As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Is China an opportunity right now, or is it worth just sitting on the sidelines and sticking with U.S. equities? As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.